Hello everyone, welcome back to Film Family. Thank you for tuning in again. Today we're going to be talking about the 1974 classic horror film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, so in honor of Halloween, we're going to be reviewing a couple classics of the genre. And uh, yeah, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre is uh, it's interesting to look at in the context of the other horror movies of that time because it came out earlier than like all the iconic franchises that we know, you know, the Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Hellraiser, like all that, you know, kind of came at the end of the 70s or 80s. This movie came out in 74 and sort of set a tone that would be carried, you know, throughout, but also kind of made like its own genre of just like these, I mean, people call it torture porn. I feel like it's a weird name to call a genre, but, you know, it's set this very gross precedent for movies and it's very like kind of just an interesting movie to watch. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously it came in 1974. I saw it on TV, but I didn't see it in 1974 TV. Like, they reissued it, I guess. But when I originally saw it, you know, the first thing that stuck to my head, you know, being a kid, was that it was based on a true story. And mm -hmm. I didn't know back then that they can actually fudge some details and stuff. Yeah, so that, it, for me, it was terrifying because... Yeah, it's very loosely interpreted, like Ed Gaines. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. But as a kid, you're thinking, you know, these people really exist. Yeah. You know? So that was my first real boogeyman that I was, like, scared of was, you know, Leatherface because I was, like, this guy with this freaking chainsaw and whatever. And, and they got Gunnar Henson, who's just, like, very physically imposing. You yeah. Know? And just extremely, like, just tall and, like... Did a great job, of, like not just face. tall. He carried a woman who was struggling, like yeah. one handed, as yeah. he took oh, her yeah. away. Like he was perfect for it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting when you look at like the other horror like monsters. Leatherface is like he could die from a gunshot, you know, which is like not really similar to the other ones. And he's just very much kind of like brainless. He's kind of just a brute who's been like brainwashed by his family. But you also don't really feel sympathetic because he seems like he naturally just wants to eat people and take faces. Yeah, that he's naturally you know? like that. And this movie doesn't really spend time on actual characters, which is actually, I think, a good, a good thing, which most of the time it isn't. But the fact that the movie just spends time sending these very kind of just unnerving and weird like visuals and noises, it does. it's very important to how the movie wants to appear because some horror movies might you know, put more effort into you know, having a story so you can maybe feel sympathy or being more engaged, but the movie really just relies on the fact that it's 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 completely disgusting. Like it's a nasty movie to watch, yeah. and that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I definitely for for its time in terms of how it was made and and you know it it did have a smaller crew, and it's just like I just commend certain movies for for being able to do that and and kind of setting a, a trend because yeah, I mean. If you think about it, like there's a big gap between Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre in terms of, you know, how it really did shift in terms of that. And it really set up kind of the tone for it gave way for Halloween to be able to happen. I think like those two movies plus The Exorcist have, you know, kind of really set what modern horror is. And in the 70s, is a big decade for that as like yep. every movie kind of after has followed some sort of template from one of those three movies, maybe The Omen too. But, you know, like, it's just interesting when you watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre because, um, and I don't mean this in an insulting way, but a lot of old horror movies are great movies, but they're not scary. I just don't think they can all hold up on an effects level or even a camera level because movies are paced faster now um, or for the most part. And seeing this movie is still genuinely scary because the images are just so frightening and just the design of everything. It's, it's all very, you know, it just you kind of feel like unclean watching the movie. And... It's just it's very interesting because the, they use close-ups of like bones and you know and even the first shot of the graves with that little you know it's, yeah. it's just like it's very you know kind of scary to watch and that's you know something you don't really find in a lot of older horror movies. The reason why I would disagree with that is because I like to see someone getting chased mm. and I feel like in this movie they herded themselves into his house one by one each one of them. Yeah. Walked into the house. It was like, like a, in yeah. such a stupid way. It was yeah. kind of like, are you guys serious? Well, really? Yeah. You know, that's obviously a big horror cliche. It's like, oh, the people are stupid. But but it, this was beyond it, horror cliche. It's a cliche stupid. when it's first done because if it set up the precedent of the cliches, you know, can it be considered cliche? I'm not saying cliche. I was just calling you it. Like, I feel yeah, like that, it's just weak. But they're also like, that, like teenagers. Probably under the influence of something, and you know they're clearly not smart people. They picked up this random guy on the street who like. It's a different time too, you know. I mean, if you really think about it, like 
you know, oh, let's go explore. Like in terms of that, now we look at it, we're like, how stupid could you be to go yeah. into a house and explore? But back then they probably weren't expecting to get like, you know, a hammer to the head and, yeah. like, you know, and all that I stuff. I mean, the movie definitely does feel like it came out in the 70s too because like you got the Daisy Dukes look, you know, that's how mm-hmm. people are talking. I think some of the music, like it's definitely <laughs> a 70s movie. And um, I don't know the exact number, but this movie had a very small budget too. So they made a lot, of, you know, a lot out of nothing. But also to, to answer that, you know, the stupid characters thing, um, the girl, the main girl, Marilyn Burns, I don't know the character's name, like, she does get out of there, runs away, and she does have to take care of a guy in a wheelchair, which is, you know, it's difficult. But she doesn't. Well, she he does. Gets, he dies. Uh, yeah, but, like, <laughs> she, tries, she tries to. Yeah. You know, that's the best you can do is try. And so, and then, like, you find out everybody in the town is, like, in this weird family, and they just lure people here. But, you know, at least, at least it makes sense that, you know, the other people are stupid, though. You know, I always, for me, it's like there's iconic scenes. And, and um, I mentioned one of them with like when Leatherface hits the guy over the head and the guy's kind of shaking yeah. mm-hmm. on the floor and then he slams the Well, that door, the door. right there is the yeah. iconic. Yeah, I love that. Sure. But that, that's like, okay, that's Leatherface, you know. <laughs> that's one of the things. And for the me, meat the, hooks too. Yeah, the meat hooks. And then also the last scene with the, the him wielding the chainsaw dance kind mm-hmm. of like in a dancing way or whatever those are things as even a kid it stuck with me like i was like wow that's like yeah. those are imagery and and i don't know i mean it's hard because you know technically i know it doesn't hold to like what we can do now and you know and but at the same time i i still really enjoy the story and i and i did enjoy the characters and everything like yeah. that i really Still love the movie. I just think on like a filmmaking level, this movie just sets itself apart so much from almost every horror movie. And obviously, you have to give some of that credit to you know Toby Hooper, who's mm-hmm. the director, um, and just how it uses like close-ups and how it's kind of paced. It just feels very different from the horror movies you watch in this decade. It feels a lot less safe, and mm-hmm. you know, all it just feels more kind of unnerving to watch because, I mean, on top of the great you know camera work with the close-ups. There is some great production design in this movie. That inside of that house looks like somewhere you would never want to be, you know. And it's it's dirty and it just looks horrible. There's like skulls in there and there's you know bird feathers and bones and stuff, and it just looks horrible. And you know that creates this very you know tense atmosphere that you know kind of is good for the audience. And plus, when she gets to that gas station, even that place looks kind of weird. I feel like this movie <laughs> ruined text for a lot of people. Yeah, probably you know? did. They didn't want to go to Texas, but. Yeah. See, yeah. me personally, I like, uh, is it the 2003 one? Which one came out after this? It takes place in 1973, as opposed to like the 60s or 50s, whenever this one took place. But it's a remake. It's, it's, the, it's, it's, the it's remake almost remake? like the remake of yeah. this one. Yeah. Okay, I do, I do remember. Because I like that one better, and I think because it holds up very, it's still scary, like even today. And this one, it wasn't. I personally disagree. Uh, well, have you seen it? Because you haven't watched a lot of scary movies. So I would like you to take a look. See. The good ones. Okay, but well, then I, I would like you to see that to compare it because that one, that this like. this one had a better budget. Oh, okay. It looked better. The shot, I think, where she kills her. I can't remember if it's a guy or a girl who blows himself away in the car. Oh, and then the, during the brown and then the shot through SUV, the head. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's just some crazy shots in that, and it's just super scary. It's really it's just, just them trying to be like, here, it's 2003, and now we can do more in movies. So let me show you what we have. The original movie says, here's our extremely small budget. We're going to show you close-ups of a grave with like this weird screeching noise, and then we're going to, you know, you go should this watch this one before scene. you say what you're saying. It's I almost will, very similar. I'll, to I'll it. go see it, and I bet money that I will not like it more. But. You know, it's the 1974 version is definitely sort of an anomaly because a movie like that is not supposed to come out. Probably like only a Clockwork Orange has that much graphic content in it in terms of like movies from the 70s mm-hmm. that are just that out there. And like it really is this very just kind of disturbing movie to watch. And it's a movie that I think like in terms of older horror movies is one of the few that holds up on a horror level mm-hmm. on like that a movie that still like, you know, frightens and scares you. And there's like probably like two jump scares in this movie. So it uses I wasn't scared in this movie. Okay, well. It's not rewatching it again. The 2003 one, I'm scared of that. Even The Exorcist, I think, is more scary as it oh holds up. No. But, yeah, this one, I, I, I get what you're saying is it's a classic, but it just doesn't hold up as a scary movie it for does. me anymore. It, it definitely I've been does. I've become desensitized, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's way too much gorier stuff out there now. Exactly, but you, the fact that you're looking at it from the, the factors that they use to exploit, you know, people's, like, natural fears and stuff like that, like... The movie just uses like very, you know, Im- like close up and just nasty imagery to kind of yeah. But so does Saw. So does all the other Texas Chainsaw Massacres. They use close ups of all the blood and guts. They spend money on it, so they're gonna get a shot of it. 
I mean, yeah, obviously. But like when you look at this movie, it's just a lot. I think better done in terms of the like not maybe the blood because it definitely doesn't use much as you know old or more recent horror movies. But like the fact that this movie uses just kind of these really weird, even like the dinner scene. The dinner scene is so like uncomfortable to watch this movie. It's the worse than guy. the 03 one. No, it's not. Yes, it is. But the fact they use this old guy and his, his hand with a hammer, it's just such like an odd, it's one of those things where you watch it and probably think to yourself like, I would like do anything to not be there, you know? And if you were there, it would probably just be like the worst experience of your life. And then it has a great ending because it doesn't really leave it off of like, she's safe. I mean, you know, she'll probably drive away because he doesn't have a car, but you never know what's going to happen with her and it's going to, you know, kind of stay with her. How do you guys want to? Do you guys want to rate these classics in terms of? Um, Definitely, because it's it's for me it's interesting because I did see the remake as well and um, it is different. Like they're, I mean they they do fall they're very loyal to it in a way, but they're, it's through different lenses. Yeah. Isn't and, the remake unrated? Huh? Isn't the remake like unrated? No, I think that was the one that came after that. Yeah, yeah. I've actually seen a lot of them. I've seen. I've seen. Next Chance to Massacre probably has awful. the least good consistency because I personally, I haven't seen a 2003 one. I'm gonna assume it's good because both of you guys like it. But like every other the last one that came out one, was oh, disgusting. It's yeah, awful. they're bad. Yeah, it's a bad franchise, and I hate to say it because I really do like this. But see, my issue, my biggest issue with this is it's called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mm-hmm. got one chainsaw kill. Okay. And almost no massacre. On the brother. Yeah. Franklin. You know what right? I mean? And I, I, you know, again, coming from where I get to see all this gory horror stuff. I wanted to see somebody How many people die in like, the uh, 2002 one. There's like four people, but they die in way more messed oh, up ways. Oh. Like but he uses a bear trap. Yeah, they do. How many? I don't remember. I haven't yeah. seen it in a minute. But like trust me, it's one of those where it's like you know how they shot the wheelchair guy yeah. from behind. Yeah, you're getting a full frontal of like that chainsaw going in there. It's like, yep. It's oh, definitely they <laughs> definitely use technology. Yeah, to, <laughs> to help it out. Um, yeah. um, I think like as a film, because the movie really doesn't have a lot of. It's like I was talking about Ad Astra. In terms of like active, passive, and sensory, this movie sort of reminds me of a mix of like active and sensory because the movie doesn't have a lot of talking in like the last forty minutes or mm-hmm. something. It's just so weird to watch. It's very like gross and uncomfortable. And you know, if Marvel movies are the equivalent of like a theme park in location, this movie is like a sex dungeon. It's nasty <laughs> <laughs> and a dirty it's bathroom. In your face. Yeah. It's a dirty bathroom. You know, you don't want to be in it. But yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd say this movie is like an eight point five. Hmm. Yeah, just because I really do think the imagery brings it up, uh, you know, but it just doesn't really have great like acting or script or anything. Yeah, I, I would second that. that. I remember, there's that one scene where she's talking in the car after like at night, and mm. they're sitting in the van and they're trying to have a conversation after she's like, "I'm just tired." <laughs> I'm like, "Wow, this is really bad." I'm like, oh, oh yeah. my god. What do you What do you give it? I would give it a seven point five, just because like. It's not a bad scary movie, and there are mm. scary movies that come out today that are really, really bad, and they're not even scary. But as far as scary movies go, and if you're going to watch something that you want to actually be terrified of, I wouldn't put this one up there I, mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if George Lucas ever stated it, but the, the beginning yellow marks, of the, like, you know, the following you're about to see and stuff, it always makes me think of Star Wars because the movie came out three years before mm-hmm. Star Wars. Like, I wonder if he saw this movie and took oh, it the And if he did, then this movie's very important in cinema history. There's another thing I like about the 2003 one is because they also have something similar to the intro. But at the end, I don't think it's real, but they made a, a police archive footage tape where they're actually taking you from oh, the yeah, slaughterhouse. Yeah, 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 Remember yeah, that? Yeah. So it, it just added you, a little something to does it. Does it have a scene as good as that grave scene with the grave robbers? Yeah, probably better yeah. ones. No. No, I take watch it. Sense. Watch it. I would like you to take a look at that. And then you can come back and be like, oh my God, best scary movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this movie is just very important in terms of the graphic content and the fact that it kind of propelled these independent filmmakers to make, you know, movies with take risks and you know, now we've gotten like a horror genre that, you know, is really, you know, kind of set up by these guys. So Yeah. And and I've been pretty consistent with my rating in terms of I have certain soft spots, especially when it comes to budget. You know, I've been very hard on movies that have a big budget, and you know, because I don't see why how a movie should be that bad with a big budget. But the same thing with a little budget in terms of when it's really love and care that they're doing, and they're, they're they've a group of friends trying to make something happen. And I really respect this movie because probably we probably wouldn't have gotten Halloween, you know, without this movie yeah. being successful. You might not have got Friday. Well, Friday after yeah, Hall- yeah. yeah when because Halloween set the president for everything yeah. else, so we wouldn't have you know would have the genre wouldn't have been what it is. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little higher, BJ, and give it a nine just Very because 
I have a respect factor um, for certain limitations in that way. I mean, it's like the, like I know the Superman doesn't hold the first Superman movie doesn't hold up compared to what we're watching now. I, but I don't know some of the gotta, more recent Supermans, like the last one I was okay. No, I meant in terms of like a superhero, effects, like in effects. effects, effects yeah, yeah, but like I'm not. Really it's still my favorite Superman. Effects level, like there's some scary older movies, but you know you're really basing a scary movie off of the type of effects. Yeah, yeah, well, but he, also the camera work, like, suspense. close-ups of, like, people... But then it's a thriller. It's not a horror movie. No, no, no. Horror yeah. is any movie with sort of, like, a fantastical element. That's how I do it. With a killer. Yeah, a killer or some sort of thing that isn't necessarily directly based in our world. Yeah, but, what is it, like, I mean, if you say something... Because Twilight Zone, fantastically done, very, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, limited it's, budget it's and all that sci -fi stuff. and horror. It's but like it's, I wouldn't consider it scary. Yeah. I wouldn't mm -hmm. consider it horror. You know what yeah. I mean? And it has that thriller element because it blows your mind. Yeah. I just think that it's, it's an easy way to differentiate the genres. But yeah, um, you know, I think like the production design on the movies like in 11. I For what they had to work with. Seriously, yeah. they really made such a great set and just such a great use of small space. Maybe that full house or that whole house feels like lived in and full of just nasty stuff. And like, you know, it just looks dirty and grimy. And, and to create such an iconic character. I mean, yeah. everyone still knows who Leatherface is. Yeah. You know. And it's interesting when you get a character who kind of peaks in his first movie that, you know, it's weird how he stayed relevant for so long. People yeah, just like the idea 40 of years. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Because even like when he puts on the pretty woman mask with the suit at the end <laughs> yeah, of the movie, the, yeah. it's so nasty, but it's just like, this guy's just a weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, if you've seen this movie, let us know. It's probably better than this 2003 version that I've been Let us know about. if you've seen the 2003 yeah. and you disagree. Still, uh, I'm going to do a poll what's on the one, What's the one you uh, hate? The 2000. I don't know what you... The, the, the last one. one, whatever came out with uh, Trey Songs in it was just so <laughs> bad because A, he's listening to his own music in the movie and then B, it ends and this is not a real spoiler alert, it just sucks, but it ends <laughs> with the girl who's being the victim is the cousin of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre dude at Leatherface and then has her sick... She sicks Leatherface on Trey Songs, I'm pretty sure, and says, go get him, cuz. And I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Never make another one of these, <laughs> ever. So don't see that one, whatever yeah. that one is. <laughs> now everyone's that, curious to yeah, see it. That one was not good. That's more of a comedy than anything else. Yeah. yeah um, so yeah, if you've seen this movie, let us know what you thought of it and uh, you know which, what's your favorite Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Adios.